Beautiful. Gordon Ramsay has quite a few shows. Kitchen Nightmares, The F Word, Master Chef, and most chefs cannot seem to satisfy Gordon Ramsay's delicate palate. Oh. I need the toilet, excuse me. However, every now and then, a chef manages to blow him away. It doesn't happen often, but we found the rare instances where Ramsay was nice and even enjoyed the food. Never miss out on our latest videos by subscribing and clicking that little gray bell. Bread Pudding Let's set the scene. It is one we know well enough. Gordon Ramsay is visiting a struggling restaurant to turn things around. The restaurant is Zeke's. Hello. The atmosphere is tense. Ramsay has already had a starter and a main dish. He was not blown away. No. In fact, there was a lot of cussing and spitting. What the hell is that? It was very Gordon Ramsay. Anyway, the nervous waitress brings over the dessert. She knows the whole world is watching, and most importantly, her boss too. He's killing me not to know what he's saying. If he doesn't like it, she is right in the splatter zone. Things do not look good when she puts a serving of bread pudding in front of him. He does not look impressed, and the poor girl tries to back away ever so slightly. He lifts up the spoon, we duck for cover, and cover our children's ears. He comments that it doesn't look fantastic and even pokes around a bit, probably looking to see if anyone dropped a cockroach in his food or something. The dramatic music swells and we just know that this outburst will be a lot of fun. He takes a bite and says, But it tastes delicious. The crowd roars, everyone sits in a stunned silence, and angels began singing from above. Okay, okay, so we might be overreacting just a bit. But come on, this is such a rare moment. We deserve to be a little over the top. Thank God he liked some I did. I'll take that any day. The poor girl couldn't believe her ears either, and she was smiling from ear to ear. Love the bread pudding. Whoever made that bread pudding, it must have been the best moment of that chef's life. There we go. Loved it. Carrot cake. Running a restaurant is stressful. Like any other business, it takes over your life and you never have a moment to rest. But if all that hard work is for nothing and your restaurant fails, it can be a devastating blow. Imagine your relief when world-renowned chef Gordon Ramsay walks in and promises to help. Your initial feeling would be relief and then dread. This could be a f***ing disaster. He will be tasting your food and he is not the most gentle person around. That's not cooking. That's one restaurant was having such problems and the pastry chef, Sharon, was trying to keep her place at Bazzini's, but was struggling to do so. Then Ramsay stepped in and it seemed like all her problems were over. Ramsay tasted the food. Oh boy. Oh. The poor people in that kitchen. And then they brought out the homemade carrot cake. Poor Sharon came in just as he was about to take a bite. She was so nervous that she went out and said hello, but so softly that Ramsay got a fright. Bloody hell. Oh, you scared me. Don't come around the corner like that. That could not have calmed her nerves. You know what did calm her nerves? When Ramsay said that he liked it and even asked if he could steal the recipe. That's made with passion. As much as you have. You make love to that carrot cake, don't you? Now that is a compliment. Can you imagine the relief and utter excitement? We must say that Sharon handled it well. What would you do if Ramsay wanted one of your recipes because he liked it so much? That would be a dream come true for most people, let alone a chef. Burger Triumph There are an endless array of burger restaurants around. In fact, you don't have to look very hard to find one. It is, however, hard to find a burger joint that would be able to impress the formidable chef Ramsay. That guy is downright impossible. That is why we love him. Right, the food. Anyway, Ramsay was helping the management of Burger Palace to regain their customer base and find some new ones to keep the debt collectors away. The chef offered up a mediocre dish, and Ramsay was not impressed. So he kept his mouth shut so that no one would be offended. Yeah, you're right. That would never happen. He sent the dish back with some colorful words and received a different dish with the same type of food. Ramsay was skeptical, but then he cut through the burger. At this point, our stomachs began to rumble because that burger actually looked pretty delicious. Ramsay commented on how great it looked. Bloody hell, I mean, that's what I call a burger. And the shaking chef thanked him. He then took a bite. We were never as jealous of anyone than at that very moment. Our stomachs rumbled, our mouths watered, and Ramsay proclaimed that he liked the burger. It's delicious. That poor chef nearly had a heart attack. Of course, Ramsay's fellow tasters were not as happy with the burger, but we stopped listening at that point. We were off to go find our own burger. Lesson learned. That is the last time we will ever watch the cooking channel without eating first. It is just too risky. Red Velvet We now join Ramsay at Blackberry's, a very cute but ultimately failing restaurant. Ramsay has had a tough time, and he looks like he wants to go home and take a bubble bath or something. Oh my God. A serving of red velvet cake is put before him, and the poor pastry chef busies herself with other tasks, 
probably freaking out just a little. Ramsey sighs and digs in, and we are waiting for the verdict. Our breath is bated, and we have to admit that the cake looks phenomenal. But what will Ramsey say? The music becomes more daunting, and the camera zooms in. Oh my god, he loves it! In fact, he can't stop saying wow! Wow, wow, wow. Everyone breathes a sigh of relief, and the pastry chef comes out of the kitchen. She shyly asks what he thought of it, and he gives her a sincere compliment. Delicious. She then gets a kiss on the cheek from the formidable chef Ramsay. We are not sure at which point our hearts melted, but seeing that proud smile on the old lady's face touched us all. We think we were all a puddle of mush by now. When Ramsay likes the food, it seems like the whole world is at peace. We're not sure why, but tell us if we're wrong. Twitter victory. By now, you've probably heard of the fact that Ramsay invited aspiring chefs to tweet their efforts to him. He promised to critique their dishes in return. Let's just say that the results were not pretty. Actually, they were pretty hilarious and kept the internet amused for a few weeks. Which is an impressive feat all on its own. Ask Kim Kardashian. Anyway, to date, there aren't a lot of people who have gotten positive feedback. Think of Ramsay as the bloodthirsty shark and the aspiring chefs as chum in the water. At this point, we could probably count the number of compliments he has given on a hand with most of the fingers missing. One of those talented fellas is a guy named Lewis Mack. Lewis submitted a picture of his scrambled eggs on toast. Wait, seriously? That's it? That's right. It was a simple dish without too much garnish and no fancy name. And Ramsay said that it looked good, which may not seem like a big deal, but it totally is. Think of that scene on Spongebob where all the little Spongebobs are running around in his mind and everything is on fire. That is basically how the internet reacted. The tweet received 20,000 likes and retweets. Lewis was insulted by some trolls, but when Ramsay has complimented you, you are basically untouchable. You go, Lewis! That breakfast looks better than anything we could have ever made ourselves. Clam Chowder We are now back in the drama-filled world of kitchen nightmares. We love this show. Anyway, it is the same old story. The restaurant is failing and the staff is rude. Customers won't go near the place and Santa Ramsey is there to save the day and brew some egos. The ratings are going well and the food is bad as per usual. After all, most people like food and won't go to a place that serves bad food. Unless you deliberately go to a place because it serves bad food, in which case, that's weird and you should probably stop that before you get food poisoning. Moving on. Okay, so Ramsay is tasting the food and the usual tense music is welling up. Ramsay is at the Handlebar restaurant, and to give you an idea of how bad it is, even the staff admits that there is nothing good on the menu. Everything that's here is pretty much crap food. By this point, we were all sitting on the edge of our seats in anticipation. We were ready for some spitting, swearing, shouting, and maybe even some vomiting. The appetite appetizer came out, a bowl of clam chowder. We admit to feeling a bit disappointed. It looked good, and good food does not usually cause vomiting. Instead of getting the regular blow up, we witnessed something even more special. That's uh, nicely seasoned, um, very tasty, and perfect for a winter's day. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Ramsay liked the food. It was like spotting a unicorn. Amongst all the negativity, there was a shining ray of hope for the restaurant. Young Chef the one thing we have learned from Kitchen Nightmares is that it is never a good idea to go into business with family. Half the time it ends in divorce and alienation. The other half ends with tears and screaming. There is a difference, trust us. Anyway, one of these restaurants was the Hot Potato Cafe. This was a tough cookie for Ramsay, and he admits to having his doubts about whether he would be able to help, which is saying a lot. Basically, the family was fragmented and dysfunctional, and not in the good way. One of the chefs, Danielle, was not interested in being a cook, which is weird because she cooked at the restaurant. The world is odd and often makes no sense. Ramsay was able to turn the business around and the restaurant's reopening was a big success. The family served over 100 people and no dishes were returned. The food was so good that Ramsay praised young Danielle, telling her that she had an amazing future ahead of her. Danielle's goes on the menu. Danielle, great job, delicious. We know there are thousands of young chefs who would have loved to be in her place. After that, Danielle was ready to take the culinary world by storm, which we are sure she will do since she managed to impress THE Gordon Ramsay. This was one of those rare moments when Kitchen Nightmares showed a family genuinely drawing closer to one another. Piccolo Teatro The thing is, Gordon Ramsay is a great chef and businessman, but he can only do so much. Some of the restaurants that he coaches don't make it. This is not because of something that he did wrong, but let's face it. If a restaurant was failing before he came along, a few days with him is not going to change the managerial style, the accounting, the laziness, or the downright irresponsibility of some people. One such example is of the Piccolo Teatro, which was like a sitcom. 
There was the wild, immature owner, Rachel, the overbearing waitress, Stephanie, and the nutty Brazilian chef who had a bad habit of keeping rotten food in the kitchen. Suffice it to say, Ramsey was not impressed and he showed it. You know who else wasn't impressed? Rachel's dad, Brian. Brian was a successful restaurateur and had the unfortunate habit of bailing his daughter out. Of course, the sitcom ended as soon as Ramsey stepped on set. The nutty chef had to go, and Brian came to the rescue with a brilliant chef named India. India played a major role in turning the restaurant around. Ramsey left and everything was hunky-dory. But a few days with the foul-mouthed chef was not enough to instill a love of being responsible in the flighty Rachel. She left a big mess behind to become a call girl. Her dad was left with debt, and India was left out in the cold. That is, until Ramsey came to check up on the restaurant. When he found out what happened, he hired India on the spot, and word is that she's doing very well for herself in the culinary world. Crab cakes. In this episode of Kitchen Nightmares, Ramsey visits the Mixing Bowl in Belmore, New York. This restaurant has more going on than a telenovela, and we were swept along in all of it. There were the owners, Billy and Lisa, who were having marital problems, and the oddball manager, Mike. There were a lot of problems with this restaurant, and the food was one of them. We have to admit that we forgot about the food in the middle of all that juicy drama, but Ramsey didn't. He ordered the crab cakes, with the weird manager watching his every move. It got creepy, and Ramsey asked him to leave, only after an argument about garlic. Yeah. May I ask you not to stare at me? Absolutely. Makes me feel really uncomfortable. No problem. Man, we love reality cooking shows. The rest of the restaurant may have been in shambles, but the crab cakes were not. In fact, Ramsey is impressed with them. Mm. Award winning. They were award winning after all, but that was where everything good about the place ended. Man, 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 get me out of here. Good news, Ramsey gave the place a makeover and it was a success. Even the weird manager was allowed to stay. We aren't sure why. Okay, so does that mean that if you're bad enough at running a restaurant, Ramsey will come and help you out? Or if your marriage is on the rocks, all you need to do is have Ramsey yell at your manager? This is hard. Moving on. Mama Sherry's. It does not matter how many restaurants we visit, how many famed chefs cook for us, or how good of a chef we become. Mom's cooking will always come first. We don't know why, it might have to do with science. We're not sure. Ramsey remembered this when he visited Mama Sherry's soul food shack in Brighton. Mama Sherry is from the deep south in America and has raised 33 foster children. She is amazing. Carrying on. She also wanted to open a restaurant. Despite that though, she was behind on her bank loan and no one was visiting the restaurant. It was quite literally a shack and most people would have missed it if they were walking past. It looked like a place that gave out free candy, with a K. But such was Mama Sherry's personality that Ramsey didn't have the heart to say so. He looked very uncomfortable and was probably considering cutting his losses and leaving. And then she brought out the food. He looked unimpressed until he took a bite, after which he finished the entire plate. Mama Sherry was so overcome with emotion that Ramsey had to wait a few minutes for her to stop celebrating so that he could give his feedback. And he cleaned his plate! But it didn't matter. She couldn't stop beaming. He likened her food to being at home with his own mother's cooking, which is the highest compliment he could ever have paid her. And there we have it, all the rare and beautiful times that Ramsey enjoyed the food he was given. If you liked the video, leave a like and don't forget to let us know in the comments. Have an awesome day and don't tweet Ramsey your food, just don't.